What's happening, y'all? I say that because I was just down in South Carolina where everybody says y'all, and I'm honest, I love it. Today, we're gonna learn how to clean a southern whitetail. What's the difference? Not much. They do look completely different than our western whitetail. To me, they have a thinner nose, a different beam shape on the deer that I'm seeing, but no, it is the same species. I've got one that was a deadhead uh, that I've hydrated, and I got one that was harvested on this hunt, a young seven point. But what I'm gonna do different is I'm gonna leave those nose bones in today. I'm in this big debate with a friend, so I'm just gonna do it with the nose bones in, so you can see it. Whitetail are substantially easier to leave in than mule deer. I don't really know why. So first things first, I'm gonna pull them out of the water. I'm gonna shrink wrap from the pedicle halfway up. We're gonna get a pot of water boiling and then we're gonna power worship. Thanks for watching. That plastic tote right there I purchased from the Dollar General in Blair, South Carolina. That tub and that duct tape. I put both heads down in there, taped it up, put it on the plane and set it home. Now prior to, I had removed all the hide, the eyes and the brains. I did it right there in the hotel. Super simple. Have knife, will remove. Now let's pick up right here. This is the best advice I can give you when cleaning skulls with antlers. You are gonna wanna wrap the base of the antler from where the bone meets the burr and up. What we're doing is we're trying to prevent any sort of discoloration on that antler from the boil. So if you have soap down in your boil, peroxide, anything in there, when it comes up and hits that natural color on the antler, it will absolutely create contrast. By wrapping it and keeping anything that winds up in the water, meaning any part of the antler that winds up in fluid, it will prevent discoloration. Trust me on this, this is the right advice. If you wrap it with shrink wrap, you can buy it anywhere, right? Home Depot, Ace Hardware, your shipping store, wrap it nice and tight, then hit it with a little electrical tape. The electrical tape bonds it nice and tight and then finish it up with a zip tie so it doesn't sweat and relax. This will save you so much work in the end and make that finished product beautiful. Next step, I fill a pot with water. I drop in a little Zotes pink soap. It's a laundry soap, 59 cents for a bar. And then I drop those knife cleaned skulls in there, meaning I've removed most everything I can with a knife. I bring it to a boil, and when it starts to boil, rolling boil, as soon as it starts, I turn it down to a simmer. When the skin on the nose starts to split, if you look at the nose of that animal and you can see bone, it's time to start power washing. The rule here at White Bone Creations is you want to spray into every hole and every orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away. Let's get to washing. Now, because I'm doing two skulls here, I chose to do the younger, softer animal first and the older animal second. Older animals will always take more heat than younger animals. Just a good rule of thumb. Boom, 90% clean in two minutes and 30 seconds. Just kidding, that's when you fast forward it and make the film. The whole thing took about 30 minutes. Now that they're clean, I drop them back into the same pot that I've cleaned and make sure there's no goo in there. 
I settle them down in there and I put about a half gallon of 40% by volume liquid peroxide. This is a little pot. I fill the rest of it with water and then I bring that whole thing to a boil. Same rules. As soon as it hits a boil, I turn it down to a simmer and then one by one, I wash off any of the loose tissue. Believe me when I tell you, bone is gonna be white, tissue will be plaque yellow. If it's yellow, make it go away. If you miss it now, when it dries, it will show up later and you can flake it off. I remove the ear butts from one and not from the other, and I'm gonna show you in the end what the difference is. Same process, different chemical. For me, this is the magic when that shrink wrap comes off and there's that perfect line from antler to white bone. That means I did my job right. Now the tissue that I covered up with the shrink wrap, that's been sitting in there sweating through all this boiling and washing time. When you cut it off, you can just take a real quick with a power washer and it'll wash beautiful, clean and white right up to the burr. From here, we're going to let everything dry 24 hours and I'll pop back in with the final piece. Y'all, I, I like saying y'all. I, I, I didn't grow up saying y'all, but I love to say it. I say it a lot now. Uh, Southern whitetail skull cleaning. Probably not that exotic, right? We skinned it. We removed as much meat and tissue as we could. Spray, spray, spray with a power washer. Then we boil it in peroxide no water mix the only thing I did different is I left the nose bones in there um, I'm gonna do my best to film this for you but I also want to kind of emphasize the fact that there's still stuff in there no matter what you think it's dry it will probably never create odor or stink but it's in there and I don't like the idea that it's in there I also on this one the deadhead I left that auditory bool in there um, the ear canal essentially and it was when I looked at it it was super super clean and now that it's dry I can see how much stuff is in there which is what I'm always preaching and then this one I removed it much much cleaner another question that comes up quite a bit where do you get these locking ID tags uh, the local taxidermist and a guy I do skull work for he had these I looked them up I buy them from Uline that is one fantastic company not sponsored by them, but I buy tons of stuff from them. So they say white bone on them. I clip them on there, and then I have a reference of whose it was. You can actually clip these on, drop them in the pot, do all your boiling, all your washing, and everything, and not lose any color. So these are a great asset if you're doing lots and lots of skulls. Like always, I've brushed them with flooring mop and glow, just one nice little thin coat to keep dust from settling in. They're beautiful. They represent the South in a very special, truly iconic way. And I love white-tailed deer. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.